On the day of Pentecost, last Sunday, we celebrated the birthday of the Church. The Holy Spirit was poured out and the Christian community was created. Today is Trinity Sunday. Very wisely, it follows the first celebration of birth. Today's feast is like your first birthday, which you can remember, either in person or with your children. When it was so exciting and joyful, when our parents explained that it is our birthday and why we celebrate it as a family. Then we learned how much our arrival to their life was wonderful for them, what it meant to them. Today's feast, in a similar way, wants to tell us why were we born as Christians? And how much God was waiting for us, for our life and our service to the world. Our focus today is not understanding how God in his divine nature is Holy Trinity, a community of persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. No, today is not about intellectual understanding. Though the Catechism asks, as its first question, what is the greatest mystery of our faith? The answer is, the greatest mystery of our faith is the Holy Trinity, which Jesus revealed, that God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It's a mystery, and mysteries cannot be explained. But it can be lived and it can shape our lives. And through our experience, we understand more and more of the depths of God's love. We could paraphrase the opening question of the Catechism why we celebrate our birthdays? Why? Are we Christians? Why are we Christians indeed? Our answer is because God is Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. However much surprising and seemingly it is not an explanation, it is, it is a genuine answer. It is the answer. Let me share an image from the study day with our bishop from last week. A Roman Catholic priest who is in charge of the Anglican Roman Catholic dialogue was invited to talk about the unity of the church and the need to work on it. He said that Christians are divided. Christ wanted one church, and now there are something 53,000 different churches in the world. What a sad thing. What a scandal. They have enormous differences and disagreements. So he asked, why should we work together and work on overcoming differences. Because, he said, God is revealed to us as a community of persons. And actually, this is the answer to our major problems of our lives, whatever we are facing. If there is a serious division in our family, even a legal dispute, why are we prompted by the spirit and common sense to reconcile? 
because God is a community of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Why should we forgive one another? Because God is a community of love. This is our God-given image into which we are created. Our nature through baptism is to have a dialogue, to love together, to learn together, to get closer to one another. Human nature is fallen and it is wounded by sin. But joining what we learn from the divine community is healing, nay, it is the only fulfilling way of living life. As we read in Deuteronomy from Moses, understand this today, therefore, and take it to heart. The Lord is God indeed, in heaven above as on earth beneath, he and no other. Keep his laws and commandments as I give them to you today, so that you and your children may prosper and live long in the land that the Lord our God gives you forever. Let me share with you another image, a closing image. On our screen we can see Andrei Rubliev, Rubliev's icon, the Troitsa, the Holy Trinity. And let, let us return to the image of the birthday. As adults, looking back to our first birthday, when our parents' joy was explained to us, now we know something, namely how our journey began till we could name and understand their explanation why we celebrate what we mean, what we meant to our parents. Namely, that our journey began when, in the very beginning, we had no language, we could not speak, but we contemplated the beautiful face of our mother and our father. We trusted them and we imitated and learned every single word we speak. By the time a child is forming its first meaningful uh, full word, word, the child is articulating roughly 50,000 different type of sounds and voices, just as many symbolically as many divided churches there are. So we learned every single word we speak from them. We picked it up from them. The mystery of the Trinity is similar. The mystery of the Christian life is similar. It is an invitation to imitate the loving community, the face of God as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Father speaks to us and tells his story how much he loved the Son and us, that he sent his Son and the Holy Spirit to us. The Son Jesus tells his story, how he sees us, how he loves the Father and loves us in the same way, how he would like us to flourish as persons and as a community, in particular, in our family lives and relations. The Holy Spirit tells us that we are not journeying alone. The whole church 
is cherished, cherished and guided by God. So let today's feast, the feast of the Holy Trinity, be the realization that in order to be Christians and fully functioning, fully alive human beings, we have to be interested in our God. We have to be curious what is doing among us, what God is doing among us and for the world. Let us learn from this community, just like a baby learns to speak, the Christian language. The language not of the Caesars of our countries, who always want more and more soldiers, obligatory national services, men and women included, who want more power, more weapons. No. But let us learn the language of peace, joy, and love. Let us learn the language of life. Why? For the single fact, which is our commandment, categorical imperative. If God is community, we are called to see everyone, regardless of countries, politics, and differences, as part of the one and same human family, which God intended, intended to be one by virtue of the fact, and this is our explanation, that he is a loving father, a loving son, and a lo loving Holy Spirit for us.